Hey everyone, today we're gonna talk about mistakes that most STEM majors make, or at least mistakes that I've made. As someone who absolutely loved physics and space since I was young, thought I was gonna get my PhD. Needless to say, after four years of physics at UChicago, I realized that that wasn't the path for me. And I came to the conclusion that there are actually a lot of mistakes after having worked with so many STEM majors that I see over and over again. So I just wanna touch on them. This ranges from the classes you take in high school to the classes internships that you have in college and can really affect your job performance later on as well and I've seen this time and time again and all of it could have been mitigated by just realizing that they were making certain mistakes in the way they were crafting their academics and extracurriculars. Hopefully this can help you guys out. So let's get straight into it. The first biggest mistake I'd say is not expanding on complementary skills. No industry is an exclusive industry. Everything is really cross-functional and it's the reason that someone from any major could go into consulting, finance, business, data science like me, and even journalism. Like there's a whole niche for science journalism. Neil deGrasse Tyson actually taught as a guest professor at a college, not on astrophysics, which was his PhD, but on how to write. His entire class was based on how to communicate effectively because that's something he learned through science communication and is basically a very big personality now in bridging the gap between the technical details of science and the benefit to the community. Throughout your courses and throughout your years, through your major, you're gonna learn how to solve abstract problems, craft the right solutions, because that's what science is all about. It's about theorizing and then proving that theory. And that's what gets you a job anywhere. The fact that you majored in biology or chemistry isn't gonna get you a job. The fact that you learned all of this, well, okay, wait, it might help because people love the physical sciences. Like they love people from the physical sciences. I'll talk about that in one of the tips later on. But essentially the name of your major doesn't get you the job. The skills that you gain during that major will. So you shouldn't not take English literature. If you have the chance and you like it, don't prioritize only your STEM courses over for other courses that can complement your STEM skills. I took English literature and history higher level courses alongside my math and physics courses my entire high school career. And I think it's the reason I'm a good communicator. I think it's the reason people trust me in editing their college essays and enjoy it. I've gotten so much value from writing so many papers for English literature and for history and just understanding and synthesizing information and communicating it in the right way. I even had two internships where I published content. The first one, it was a historical booklet for an astrophysics observatory. So it was a mix of history and physics, which I ended up minoring in history in college. And the second summer I worked at a national lab, a Department of Energy lab, where I published articles on science communication after interviewing 50 plus researchers in the math and computer science department. I think it's the reason I was also prepared for interviews, prepared to talk to people when I decided that I didn't want my PhD and wanted a job. But even if you want your PhD, you're gonna have to defend your dissertation. You're gonna have to interview for a postdoc role. This is all important. So expanding on complementary skills, totally worth it. If you like something that's outside of your direct major, do it because it will help you later on. The second, and this is something that plagued me a lot when I was studying physics at the University of Chicago. I thought academia was my only route and it is not. As a STEM major, I think we really undervalue ourselves because you understand the whole R&D research and development process from the beginning of crafting a theory to all of the evidence you gather to prove it, as well as the research that goes into proving a new theory. Every PhD requires an original work and that really parallels the whole R&D route that you really take if you're in technology, you're in consulting, and essentially you have a lot of skills that will benefit you later down the road regardless of what career path you end up taking. It's kind of the reason that most CEOs aren't like business majors. They're all engineers or they're all STEM majors. Um, look at Elon Musk, for example. He majored in physics. And then the CEOs of Google and Microsoft and Amazon all are engineers and that's how they started out. They were all essentially STEM majors that killed it in the C-suite. And I think it's because of all of those inherent values 
and skills that you gain in the rigorous process of gaining scientific knowledge and proving what you learned. Academia might be the number one reason that people end up going into certain fields, especially physics. I think most people who major in physics expect to go on to grad school and get their PhD. You find out what works for you throughout the process, but don't limit yourself to just academia. Just a quick interjection to say if you found any value in this video so far, think it might help someone else, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below so that my content can reach other people and I could keep doing this. Thank you so much. The third is not applying to jobs and not interviewing for jobs your senior year of college and assuming that you're just going to go to grad school. This really does depend on the instance. I'm not going to say that everyone should be interviewing for jobs, but I think it's a mistake if you don't try to see if that's something that would interest you because I'm not gonna lie the stipend for grad school if you're getting your PhD is extremely extremely low as biochem or physics major you will be making four to five times more by just having a job and that might benefit you for a year or two before you apply to grad school you really want to think about all your options and this kind of ties into my first point about complementary skills, you can use your internships to explore other areas that you could be potentially interested in. If you're a physics or chem or bio major and you're really good at math and know how to code, maybe you go and get an internship in quantitative finance where you make a lot of money and also see if you like that kind of corporate lifestyle, at least for a little bit. Rather than working with your professor who you work with, you know, all year on research, maybe take a couple months to explore another route because because you don't want to go all the way down the line at 25 years old and realize that you're in a PhD program and you don't want to be there because I know people in PhD programs that are kind of in the same route right now and a lot of them actually in physics end up going into the finance world because the money is so good and they love physics majors there because of all of those abstract skills that you gain and also all physics principles are actually the ones that are in algorithmic trading so it's it's very interesting stuff so definitely try out different internships that aren't straight research just so you know what's out there and if you want interview for other jobs while you're applying to grad school I know it's a lot but it might be good to start early than later to know what you want the next question this is something that really changed every grade I got because I essentially thought I was the only one who didn't know anything and would never ask questions and that is a huge huge mistake go to every single office hour that your professor or your teaching assistant have and ask as many questions as you can even if you don't have questions which will never happen you will always have questions but if even if you don't go to office hours and talk to them about their research ask them questions these are people that will help you in the future down the line your professors your TAs and your peers are your greatest assets and you need to take advantage of that especially as a STEM major in the science world whether you're in computer science physics whatever you are gonna have a lot of problem sets that are complicated that you can't solve by yourself because you're not born with all of this knowledge so ask questions go to every single office hours even if it's an easy class, do it. You will learn a lot more about that industry, that career path, your professor, and also it gives you a little edge when they're grading. My last point is actually about not asking for more responsibility in your research lab. If you're working in a research lab, I'm assuming you might, you know, as a STEM major work, whether even if you're a CS major, you might be working with your professor on a new app idea program, whether you're in physics bio and working on direct theoretical research. Ask for more responsibility because you could potentially publish a paper in your four years in college where you're the first or second or third author. And if that is the case, that's gonna look so good when you apply to grad school because it shows that from a very young age, because we start college at like, you know, 17, 18, since then, if you publish a research paper between the years of, you know, 18 and 22, it looks very, very impressive to grad school. And to get to that point, you need to keep asking for responsibility in that lab that you work in. You don't want to just be a lackey where you're just like an assistant to a PhD student and you're just doing everything they tell you to do because that's what I did. You want to be a part of that groundbreaking research. 
And to do that, you have to put in the work, you have to put in the effort, and you have to have that responsibility handed to you. The research you do in undergrad is pretty prescient of what you do for the next six to eight years in your PhD program. Plus, once you do that research, it'll give you an inkling of whether you actually like it or not. Because I honestly did not like working in a lab setting where I was kind of alone all the time. I like working with people. I like solving problems. I like getting to the answer fast. That's why data science was the perfect route for me at the time that really honed in on my skills. And in a complimentary sense, I could work with people. I could present everything I did in a corporate setting, which I like doing. And if you don't enjoy writing a short paper in college, you're not going to like writing a 70 page PhD dissertation and defending it. So everything you do in college, don't think that academia is your only route. Likewise, don't think that you're not good enough for academia. It needs to be a balance of everything. That's pretty much it for all of the mistakes that I think STEM majors, at least me, could and have made. Hopefully this helps you if you have any specific questions on how to get internships, how to answer interview questions, or like really anything you can do to increase your skills as a STEM major, let me know down below and I would be so glad to help you out with that and create a video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys at the next video.